Hi everyone, I am Tammy Mack and welcome to my channel where I interview Canadian entrepreneurs and share information on Canadian made products. Tonight I had so much fun and enjoyment interviewing Catherine from Dwarf Stars out of Calgary, Alberta. Her and her friend of 12 years got together and created a business selling vegan chocolate because their belief is everybody should be able to enjoy the deliciousness of chocolate. Please help me welcome Catherine. All right, Catherine, I am super excited and honored to have you on my channel. Thank you so much for accepting my invite to be interviewed. I um, came across your company you're on Instagram. Of course, Instagram is the greatest ever. Um, and I being like, I have a stepdaughter who is gluten and dairy free, and I am always trying to find, um, you know, something that I can, can get her. Um, but one being this recently Christmas that I don't know if that's something you guys do, but it's hard, so hard. And when you do find something, it's meh. So let's dive in because I could just already keep going and take your spotlight away because I'm just so excited about your about who you are and what you have going on. So to get going, how can tell us a little bit about yourself and the background and who you are, where you're from? Yeah. So my name is Catherine um, from Calgary. Um, and I'm one of the co-founders of Dwarf Stars. It's actually myself and my business partner, Garrett Jansen. He is a Red Seal chef, a graduate from state, and he's originally from Germany and studied in Europe for a while too. Oh, wow. um, he is the one who created our delicious, delicious recipes. Um, and I do more of like the business marketing side. Uh, so it was a really, really good blend. Actually, we've been, we are friends for now. It's been probably like 14 years. Um, we actually met working at Calgary Co-op, one of the stores here where we sell our products now. So it's kind of come full circle, which is really cute. Yeah. We knew like a little cashier and a bakery worker <laughs> would come around and start, you know, a business together. Yeah. So yeah, um, we just uh, did our third year in business. So we've just entered fourth year of our business. Um, yeah, and we do, uh, vegan chocolate that's free from the top 10 food allergens so primarily peanuts tree nuts dairy gluten soy um, that are delicious yeah I I'm super I when I was looking on your page I'm like oh my god I just want to try a little bit of everything <laughs> <laughs> I know some people are like do you give free samples away I'm like do you get free samples at the grocery store <laughs> I mean unless we're doing a taste demo right it's like I wish we could but unfortunately shipping on its own is so expensive and <laughs> yeah yeah that's exciting so for your do, where do you where's your location do you sell out of where you make your chocolate or is it strictly out of the Calgary co-op yeah so we have a commercial facility in the northeast in Calgary it is primarily just the manufacturing we do their food production pretty much everything is made by hand there um we do allow people to pick up orders if they are in calgary locally um but we do not have like a retail storefront so we sell out of uh, retailers like calgary co-op so be safeway um blush lane community national foods we're actually across canada now so we're in about probably 350 stores and we recently started selling uh in the u.s as well Good for you guys. Yeah. Exciting. In a very small window. That's, that's huge. There's a huge market out there. Absolutely. It's yeah. When we were doing the research in the beginning, like Garrett's sister is anaphylactic to peanuts. Uh, Garrett and I have always had dairy intolerances, um, intolerances with certain things and just you know, a lot of products on the market are filled with a bunch of crap, to be honest. And you, yet our bodies don't process them very well and make us feel sick. And I am a massive sugar fiend and I love chocolate, but I also like being healthy. And I'm like, I just wish someone had this like delicious, like, cause chocolate, the, the basic ingredients are good for you, you know, that didn't have the other stuff in it. And so it was kind of a culmination of that and yeah, wanting to make a better product, but Garrett's still holding on to, you know, his chefy chef side wanted to make it like perfect and delicious. And honestly, when he first made them, they had butter and dairy in them. And I was like, I want it out of there. Like I, I want a vegan product that's still just as delicious. And he's like, if I can make it taste as good, we'll do it. 
Yeah. And he managed to. <laughs> made a mission. Yes. That is so good. And I, I love the fact that you did mention, you know, the stuff you buy, the cheap stuff from the store. It is awful for us. Like it is, our bodies are not designed to digest that stuff and break it down and to absorb it. It is not at all what we're supposed to be eating. So just not only are you, you know, touching base on for all of those people and helping them who have those allergies, but for people, like you said, like yourself, just want to be healthier and eat stuff that your body likes and your tummy likes. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, we get that question a lot, you know, sometimes when people leave comments on our stuff and like, well, that's expensive, or, you know, you're trying to gouge people and we're like, no healthy food is expensive. Just like, um, you know, good quality clothes that are made, you know, not in sweatshop factories. Like there's a reason why things are cheap and there's a reason why usually things cost a little bit more because you're paying for you know the wholesome ingredients you're paying for the labor of you know we hire here locally um, and have hired people during this pandemic which has been crazy and amazing so um yeah there's costs associated at like every point in a business so we we try to communicate the value as much as possible but you can't make everybody happy <laughs> and you know what it's all relative like it, it really is. It's, you know, like for your vehicle, my vehicle is, is, is the same thing, right? Like if you're going to put water in it, it's going to die, but you need to put good stuff in it to sustain and be good and be healthy. Like totally. it's the same thing, you know? And I, I just, I think if people were to look at the whole picture, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to eat it all the time. Like you can go eat, you know, whatever, but it's just like, it's nice to have options, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how does where you live influence who you are and what life you live? So not necessarily um, with Dwarf Stars, but just with your life. Have you, how long have you lived in Calgary and are you from there? So I was born in Edmonton. Okay. And I actually, I moved to Calgary when I was probably like three years old. My parents moved us here. So I've grown up in Calgary. Um, but I think like, I was thinking about, you know, this question and I was like, well, you know, I don't want to upset anybody, but we're not from like a very culturally rich place where I'm like, oh, the food and this, whatever, which the scene is getting amazing. Right. But I thought about it. And one thing that I feel like really impacts me on a daily basis is my gratitude for living in not just Calgary, but Canada. Yeah. Um, how good we have it, like just down to the bare necessities of safety, you know, um, having all my needs met, um, an abundance of food and anything that I want, I can get. Just, I think there's a lot of really simple things that a lot of people take for granted or feel like they're entitled to. And it doesn't take, you know, very far anymore, especially in our, you know, globalized world to turn on the TV and see what's going on in a country like Syria, where people are just, you know, trying everything to get out of here because they're not even, they're not even safe. They don't even know if they're going to be alive or like their family members are going to make it through the day. So, totally. yeah. So thinking about that kind of stuff, um, it's just like, yeah, the gratitude is immense. And to be able to do what we've been able to do is just not possible for some people. So my, I'm very aware of my privilege as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what a great answer. I love that because we think and talk about that in our house all the time, you know, just for the simple fact of the things that we take for granted in a meal every day, you know, like how often do we eat bacon and how often do we eat, you know, just all these rich foods and, yeah, fresh fruits and vegetables that and like, we'll go to a supermarket and people if one has like a dent in it or like a scab, they're like, oh, I don't want that one. <laughs> they want the perfect no. wax coated, perf you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, good. Um, so how did so I guess you touched on this a little bit already. So how your business transpired from an idea to what it is today. So um, do you have any more that you can touch on? Like you two work together and, um, it just kind of like, how did that conversation start or happen? Like yeah. start a business? Like how did that yeah. happen? So it's really interesting. Um, I had a, a business previous that didn't work out and he was up in Grand Prairie and was starting a potential new business, a meal prep company actually with somebody up there. And that didn't end up working out. And he ended up moving back to Calgary and was like, 
he never, they, oh man, he spent like a year working on this business. Like they had their location picked out, everything ready to go. And then it just didn't end up happening because uh, business partner just didn't want to do it anymore. And so he moved back here and he's like, Catherine, like I have to start my own business. Like, I just know this is what I want to do. Like, please, please, please. And my prior business with someone was like a, a friend and they always say, don't go into business with friends. And I was like, I tried it. Didn't, didn't like that. I like, Gary, you're my best friend in the entire world. Like, I don't want to sacrifice this. And he's like, listen, like he really just laid it out. And was like, you, I know that you work as hard as I do. Like, that's one thing that we have is like our commitment, our dedication, our work ethic. They're so aligned. Like, there's no reason why this can't work. Like you've got this side, I've got this side. It's a perfect marriage. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I was like, I always wanted to, you know, market and work on a business with a consumer packaged good product. I thought it'd be so fun. I believed in it. I couldn't stop eating these things. And I was like, for the sake of me, if I can eat these every day, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a conversation like that. And it's like, shoot, let's give it a chance and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good thing you did. I know, right? <laughs> it's and it and it's crazy. And I always say this too, like everybody always just assumes we're we're married and we're not. Yeah. And um, but the business relationship has taught me what marriage probably will be like. Like I haven't been married, <laughs> yeah. but wow, has it like our friendship and stuff grown? We know each other better than we probably ever would be would have been able to. Yeah. Um, and our communication is so strong. Like the stuff that we've gotten through has been yeah. I um I absolutely love and want to hear the story again. Um so I watched the little video about you know who you guys are and what a fun video for one. Um, but I just, I loved how you guys touched on how the name Dwarf Stars came about. And so can you share a little bit about that? Because I just, I fell in love with that story. Sure. So our original product uh, were uh, not actually the pumpkin seed butter cups, which everyone's come to know us for, um, but they were uh, these little um, dry roasted chickpeas that were covered in pumpkin seed butter and chocolate. So they were meant to be like a nut free chocolate covered nut, if you will. Um, so that was our first product and they kind of look like little asteroids. And so with my marketing brain, I like being creative. I want to sing a little kooky that people are like, huh, what is dwarf stars? Like, what is, what is even, what is that if they see it? So like I was looking for something kind of unique like that. Um, and we started researching astrological terms and I came across the term dwarf stars and dwarf stars are stars um, in our solar system that don't shine as bright as the other stars, but they're still stars. Um, and we're, when two or more of them coalesce or come together, they can create a massive interstellar explosion. So they can create something bigger than themselves. That's just amazing. So I loved this metaphor because Garrett and myself are total quirky weirdos <laughs> we're just we like to have fun we don't take ourselves too seriously but we've also been underdogs in our lives um you know Garrett was told when he was in the culinary industry like good luck being gay in the culinary industry like you're not going to make it you're not going to go anywhere you know and I've um had people tell me like oh yeah like you would be you know you'd be really perfect if you just lost some weight you know these kinds of things where it's like what does that kind of stuff have to do with anything you know what I mean to be successful and so we've always had that kind of like underdog mentality of just we're gonna work our butts off and we're gonna show absolutely everybody like what we're made of and what really matters because what really matters is on the inside and so it's kind of a metaphor for that yeah love it oh yeah I love it <laughs> so if unfortunately there's those narrow-minded ignorant comments that get made, you know, and, and my hope, and I'm sure your hope is that pe when people hear those comments, they use them to fuel themselves to, to push themselves through and prove them wrong because those comments mean nothing. And it really breaks my heart, especially when I hear it amongst my kids and at school and, you know, you come home and it's like, a, it's so, it takes so much more energy to pull them out of the, that mentality and to not have that be the focus of their, their thoughts about themselves. It's, it's unfortunate. It's so, yeah. And, and like, it's really easy to let those kind of things define you. Yeah. And it's like, 
who, who is that person anyways? Like, why did they get a say of how you're going to define your life or view yourself? Right. Which is a lot easier to understand when you get older, but yeah, when you're younger, it's really tough. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it molds you forever something. Yeah. Right. So hearing that, you know, that story of your guys is, I, I love it. I think it's such a great, a great story and a great message to send. I love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And obviously it lent to the allergen free as well. Right. So we're like bringing a lot of people in. Cause like, as you mentioned, it is really tough to find things that are free of this and this and this and this, <laughs> that also tastes good that the kids want to eat. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it was just, it was a kind of perfect culmination of everything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So how has becoming an entrepreneur changed you? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's a heavy question. (laughs) uh, Yeah, it's a, it's a big one. Um, Wow. Uh, Accountability uh, is a massive thing. Time management, um, responsibility. When you are an entrepreneur, there's nobody that pulls you out of bed in the morning and says, this is what you have to do for the day it's, it's literally all up to you and what you're able to make of your business and yourself is it, it's all on your shoulders. Like there's nobody left to blame, right? Like when you're in a workplace, you could be like, well, so-and-so that they're the reason why, like, there's no excuses anymore. It's like you make it or you don't. <laughs> so it builds a lot of grit. It builds a lot of resilience, um, and a lot of fortitude. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what do you like most about being an entrepreneur? Oh, I love that, uh, we have the freedom to pretty much try whatever we want, you know, within reason with when, within what makes sense for our business, but, um, being a small, you know, budding company, we're not strapped down so much by like a red tape or a process that it has to go through. If we get an idea, Garrett and I can discuss and be like, Hey, do you think we could do this? It's like, well, let's try it. So it's, it's really exciting. Um, we can be super creative. We can, we can do, yeah, all kinds of things like that's, that's really fun. And when you do have your wins, it's like, wow, like we did this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And that's all you. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. So I guess on the flip side, what is it that you like least about being an entrepreneur? Oh very stressful (laughs) because on the flip side if you make a bad decision or something gets messed up um it's all on your shoulders again like more most recently we had unfortunately a recall on our products so um we had a supplier give us a batch of chocolate that was contaminated with milk and obviously we claim our products are dairy free and there are a lot of people with dairy allergies that eat our products it was terrifying um Garrett and I well we went through yeah a a long period of just intense stress um just felt awful because of people that may have eaten it and had a reaction um and yeah but you know you have to do the right thing and it was you know, on top of it, as soon as we found out, letting everybody know, um, posting anywhere we could, sending out emails, notifying all our suppliers, our distributor, um, everything to make it right. Because yeah, in our minds, there's just no other option. Yeah. That would create some sleepless nights. Hey, Ooh, Garrett. Yeah. Like his, his side's more the food manufacturing, obviously it was stressful for both of us, but for him, he really took the weight of that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely <laughs> sleepless nights, not eating. I was, I was pretty concerned for him. Um, but honestly, the reaction from our customers was that that's literally what got us through. They were just so understanding and compassionate and, you know, like you guys did the right thing and this happens. And, um, yeah, that really, we just broke down. <laughs> we're just like, oh, yeah. well, thank you so much for understanding because it's, it could have been everything gone, you know, that you've yeah. built for three years. Yeah. And thank God for those compassionate people, because when you're trying to peel yourself off that floor, (sighs) that is how you're doing it. That is the only way you do it, right? Is just having those people, those amazing, phenomenal, understanding people to just be there and say, it's okay. Grace. They literally go out of their way. Even ones that, um, you know, would just take the time to send an email and just saying, I could only imagine what you're going through right now. Like, that you don't even know that, you know, maybe brought, maybe brought your product once, but saw it like that compassion is like, wow, it was everything. Yeah. And, you know, as a consumer, it is so important that when those messages come through, no matter how small or how big, 
the circumstances, there's always human beings on the other side. It's oh, a yes. it's all like, men. It's all men. Different. They yeah. are there's human beings on the other side. So it's nothing's intentional, right? Like it's just things happen and it's it's to not forget that. Absolutely. Like I, yeah. Cause on the flip side of that, like we have amazing people, but then, you know, there's people that get upset about other things. Yeah. And I, I've literally sent an email before saying exactly that. Yeah. Or was like in the future, please just remember, like, I'm not a robot. There's a real person that's reading all your, your stuff. And just, we're trying to do our best. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Good for you guys. That's not easy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is one thing that you know now with running your own business that you had wished you had known at the beginning? Yeah, definitely. It's asking for help. Yeah. Um, knowing that there are so many people and programs and organizations, um, even in just Calgary or Alberta that are so beyond willing and eager to help small businesses. Um, you know, going through the process, we ended up finding it out and we went through like ATB X's accelerator program and like networking and all these different things. We did the top program and there's so many organizations that are just waiting there to like give you this wealth of knowledge, informa information, make the connections. If you don't know something, like search for people that can help you find those people. Like, even if it's not the right contact, but somebody, you know, um, in the CED or BDC or whoever it is, um, or ATB and their entrepreneur, you know, center, they'll, they'll, they, their network is so vast and they can help you find something out. That's going to take you like a year struggling with, they can make that happen so fast. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to know it all. You don't need to know it all. I mean, there's no need to be afraid. Like, I think in the beginning, we were so scared. We're so new to like the entrepreneurial community and, and even like business in Calgary. And you're like, oh, I don't want to bother anybody. You know, that's like a massive thing for me too, where it's like, well, I don't, and, or they being fear of rejection or like, they might say no, or like, honestly, what's the worst that can happen if they just don't respond to you? Totally. So what? So yeah. what? Like what's on the, what's on the other side? Like what's the best case scenario, right? Okay. Like you get your answers, your questions answered and, you know, make a new connection and who knows what. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So what is your, what is your biggest inspiration? So is maybe it's a what, or maybe it's a who, but what inspires you? A big inspiration in my life is my dad, mm -hmm. um, his work ethic and his kindness nice. have just, yeah, they're just, uh, the biggest inspiration to me. Um, he's a doctor and my entire life, I just saw how hard he worked, um, on call, you know, constantly missed so many, you know, holidays or special dates or whatever. And on the other side, he was saving people's lives, you know, and at the same time had a family to provide for and literally did the absolute best that he could. And it's just really inspiring to see someone go through, yeah, what he did and, and, and the work ethic that he had. It's just, yeah, super inspirational. And then on the other side is, you know, when I've gone to some events and, and talked to some colleagues or I've had, um, had to go to a doctor that knows him or something like that, they're always like, he's always smiling. He's so friendly. He is so kind. And I'm like, what more could you ask for? Like, that's the best thing that you want to hear about your dad, you know, or your parents. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh, nice. What, um, who has been your biggest support in life and through this business venture of yours, aside from your business partner, of course. Yeah. I'd say my parents at the same time. And I know Garrett would probably say something similar with his, um, in the beginning of our business, we were living in our parents' basements. <laughs> um, like that cliche goes, like it's true. And it sucks being like, you know, 30 years old, living in your parents' basement, starting a new company. Like yeah, that's not easy <laughs> for your own mentality. Um, but they just never waver They're They just, I feel like they believed in us more than we believed in ourselves. And we're like, yeah, of course you're going to do this. It's going to be great. I remember the first market we ever had um, was at, uh, oh, it's closed now, Market on McLeod. 
that was where we launched our products and um, Garrett's sister um, and uh, son and husband came by and bought a bunch of our products and parents came by and I don't know it's just it's it's just so sweet to you know have something especially in the really early stages where you're like I don't even know what I'm doing like is this real like I feel like a fraud I don't even know if this is going to be anything this is silly I feel stupid to have them there and come and support you like that it's like it means it means everything everything um so yeah they've definitely yeah been there and just rooting for us the whole time yeah that's so nice right like to have that family there to support you and root for you and you know be your first customer and 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 kind of be that voice in your head like don't doubt yourself you got you got this right because I'm sure that there are several times for most or if not any entrepreneur we're all I mean um you have those moments where like "Mm," you know like do I really want to do this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Am I crazy? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And I think to some degree, every entrepreneur is crazy because yeah. it's a huge risk to take. And it's a, you have to believe in yourself so much and you have to sacrifice so much that you kind of have to be a little bit crazy. <laughs> I think there's this like meme that I saw floating around and it was like, uh, entrepreneurs are the only people crazy enough to trade working 40 hours a week for like a hundred hours a week. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, it's so true. <laughs> but you don't feel like you're working hundred hours if you were no, working for someone it's else. This right? vision you have, right? And you're just like, I gotta get there, I gotta get there, I gotta get there. And you don't really think about it. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so funny. <laughs> So for somebody who may be thinking about starting their own business and becoming an entrepreneur and they're sitting on that fence, the teeter totter, like what piece of advice could you give them to, you know, maybe build up a little bit of confidence or inspiration to just take that leap? Yeah, I feel like the first thing you have to have to have nailed down is like your why, like, why are you doing this? Because there's going to be really hard days. And when those days come, you have to have something stronger than just, oh, I want to make money or, you know what I mean? Whatever it is, um, it's got to be like foundational to your core because it's really going to test you. And if you really want to do it um, and have a really good plan at the beginning, like absolutely, like I know we did this and a lot of entrepreneurs probably do this. You just jump in with no business plan, no planning of anything. And I I would just really highly recommend doing that and even going to like the ETB Entrepreneur Center, connecting with a bank and getting them to take a look at it and just say, hey, can I get your feedback on this? Like, is this feasible? Um, Because you have to plan ahead and you've got to look more long term. Um, It'll save you a lot of stress. (laughs) You know, I hear so many entrepreneurs who have been in their industry for so long say, you know, create a plan, put a plan together, do a business plan. And I've seen business plan plan templates. um, And I put one together myself at one point because I was told it was important, but I could see how easy it would be for someone to decide that's a lot of work. I'm not going to do that because I don't think I need it. And to just dive right in anyways, it's just that piece of advice that's always given, but most often is also ignored. Yeah. And I, and I feel like the reason why it's so important too is like and those templates are fantastic Mm -hmm. is there's always going to be pieces in there that you're like huh I didn't think about that yeah absolutely you know and those are usually like the most important ones where you're like oh contingency plan or like or if that does happen or that doesn't happen like look at someone that maybe opened a restaurant at the very beginning of COVID or you know what I mean like where are they now Um, so you have to plan for things that you can't really even plan for. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely my advice. (laughs) Yeah. That's a good piece of advice for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So for your company with door stars, is there anything that's coming up in the, in the line or is there anything new coming out or what's coming, what can we expect to see? Yeah. So Garrett is always innovating with products, um, mostly just because he gets so excited and loves trying new things, especially with chocolate. Like there's so many things that we could do. Um, Sometimes I have to, you know, like wheel them back in because it's funny too, because our customers will recommend things too that we really want to do, but they don't understand like the production side of it, where it's like, that'll take 5,000 hours for us to do. And it's just not feasible. Or we need a crazy expensive piece of equipment to actually do that to make it happen. 
Um, but yeah, he's always innovating with flavors. I mean, uh, this Easter was the first time we did like those hollow eggs with like little minis inside. Like that was a massive feat. I don't think that's going to be happening next year. They're beautiful. It was lovely to have, but it's always, yeah, definitely innovating for holidays. Um, we're always trying to do something exciting. Uh, there's definitely going to be some new flavor flavors coming this summer. Um, but I can't announce what they are yet, but definitely Q tabs. Um, we'll probably be doing something for Halloween. And I know there's a surprise coming for Christmas if we get our ducks in a row. Yeah. Well, I know for Christmas, the one, the hardest thing it was for me to find was an advent calendar. <laughs> I found one, but I'm going to keep my eye out uh, when Christmas time comes around. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> keep your eyes peeled. I will. <laughs> I will, absolutely. <laughs> so where can my viewers find you guys? Sure. So we're on social media, of course. Um, the one we're uh, most active on is Instagram. So it's at dwarf dot stars mm -hmm. um we're on facebook it's at dwarf stars co um and twitter is at dwarf stars co we just kind of repost stuff on twitter though so if you message us it might be a long time before you, we get back to you i don't check it very often sorry um but lots going on uh because i manage all of our like accounts and stuff okay. um if they want to order online uh, again we ship across north america and we have free shipping over 69 dollars i think mm -hmm. um and it's www.dwarfstars.ca um, we've got a blog on there that we're pretty active on with information Garrett uh, teaches a really fun lesson on how to temper chocolate which is interesting yeah um, yeah he's a character so <laughs> definitely go check out that video go check it out for sure <laughs> yeah oh that's awesome so just to wrap it up with a fun question what is one of your all-time favorite books and why Oh, this is so hard. Um, ones, you know, I read a lot of spiritual books, so it's not even like really business related, but I'm just a fiend for personal growth and just learning and awareness. Um, one that definitely uh, impacted my life a lot was Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. I love that book. Oh, and then when I pick it up and like read it again, I feel like I'm reading a new book every time. Yeah just wow that is just that was a life changer for me um I love a Louise Hayes books like mirror work and um some one about self-healing yeah uh which were amazing and I also read recently uh, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic which is all about like creativity I haven't read that one. Oh, really really good and just how I don't know it kind of takes the the like oh what's the word you know when people think of creativity they kind of get really scared or or like tense up or there's such thing as like writer's block or they feel like I'm creative or I'm not it really kind of like puts that to rest and is like no it's more common than you think it is um and has some really interesting insights around around creativity blocks and stuff very cool yeah I'm gonna yeah. check it out yes oh Catherine thank you so much for coming on I am I just feel I don't know I just feel like on the moon right now because I'm excited about just talking to you. You're such an easy person to talk to and you're so friendly and kind and your business is, is, is so great and so needed. I got so many people in my world that, you know, have sensitivities or, um, total allergies like anaphylactic. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. And I'm super pumped to see what you guys have coming out for the summer for flavors. Yes. Well, thank you so much for inviting us. Um, we wish you all the best with this. We're going to do whatever we can to help you support you because yeah, well, the amazing person. that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning into my interview. And if you like what you see and you want to see more, give me a thumbs up, subscribe and comment below with an entrepreneur or a product that is Canadian and you'd like to see on my channel. Thanks so much. Peace.